tonight as we come together through the program Night Sounds. I just want you to have peace. And I think we all need a little bit of relief after a day such as the one we've had. And I appreciate the fact that we are here together. I'm Bill Pierce, and this is Night Sounds. This is something that I've been involved in for so long I can hardly recall where and when it first began. But I do know it was in Chicago. We were under a different name at that time, Night Watch was the title. But somehow or another, we realized the fact that something special was happening here. At night, by a radio. And you, right now, and I, are together in an experience that could mean the difference between life and death, between hope and despair. We bring God into the picture as if we had to bring him in. He is here, he is everywhere. Nonetheless, I present in the format of this program once more the Creator of all of us, the Creator of all things, who from the beginning was created. He is still creating. And only the Word of God knows and tells us what He will be creating and recreating in the future. And this entire scene seems so difficult for us to comprehend because God seems so awesome and so far away. And that is exactly why Jesus came. I've taken two words out of that sentence I just said. Why Jesus? Question mark. Why should he be so paramount in anyone's life? Tonight, once again on Night Sounds, we're going to delve into this. And I hope that you'll stay with me. I think you'll enjoy the music. We're going to begin with a group of singers from Brooklyn, New York. You've probably heard of the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, a very unique group of dynamic singers and musicians. This particular song with which we begin tonight is a very special one, because it concentrates on the person of Jesus Christ. We're going to ask Demarus Carbo also to do the solo work in the middle of the group. This is a beautiful number, compassionate, pervasive, comforting. And I trust that you will ask Jesus Christ to touch your life and your emotions and your personhood right now. Thank you. 
Very sensitively and compassionately singing for us tonight, soloist Demaris Carbo and the Brooklyn Tabernacle Singers, concentrating on the person of Jesus. Tonight's program entitled, Why Jesus? Somebody asked me that one time in a letter to this program. Why are you so Christocentric, they said. Why don't you concentrate on the Holy Spirit of God or God himself? Well, that's room for another program, I'm sure, as far as text and content. But enough to say that Jesus told us that all the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in him. So he makes the difference. Many an agnostic and atheist and doubter and cynic has turned to Christ when they looked far enough. One of these, named Scott Peck, a very gifted writer, theologian, recorded that his first approach to the Gospels were very skeptical. And he suspected he'd find public relations accounts written by authors who had tied together loose ends and embellished their biographies of Jesus. But the Gospels, as he got into them, began to display something else to him. And he changed his mind as he read and studied and probed. He said, I was absolutely thunderstruck by the extraordinary reality of the man I found in the Gospels. I discovered a person who was almost continually frustrated. His frustration leaps out of virtually every page. What do I have to say to you? How many times do I have to say it? What do I have to do to get through to you? Scott Peck also said, In addition, I discovered a man who was frequently sad, sometimes depressed, frequently anxious, and even concerned. A man who was terribly lonely, yet often desperately needed to be alone. I discovered a man so incredibly real that no one could have made him up. It occurred to me that if the gospel writers had been into public relations and embellishment, as I had assumed, they would have created the kind of Jesus three-quarters of Christians still seem to be trying to create, portrayed with a sweet, unending smile on his face, patting little children on the head, just strolling the earth with this unflappable, unshakable equanimity. But the Jesus of the Gospels, who some suggest is the best-kept secret of Christianity, did not have much peace of mind, as we ordinarily think of peace of mind in the world's terms, and insofar as we can be his followers, perhaps we won't either. So tonight, in the title of our time together, Why Jesus?, I will pose that question. How can we know him? How can we meet this real Jesus of whom Scott Peck got a glimpse in his writing? Philip Yancey said, I have made a conscious attempt to view Jesus from below, to grasp as best I can what it must have been like to observe in person the extraordinary events unfolding in Galilee and Judea. Like Scott Peck, I too feel thunderstruck by what I found. And Philip Yancey in his book, The Jesus I Never Knew, said, Icons of the Orthodox Church, stained glass windows in European cathedrals, and Sunday school art in low church America all depict on flat plains a placid, tame Jesus. 
Yet the Jesus I met in the Gospels was anything but tame. His searing honesty made him seem downright tactless in some settings. Few people felt comfortable around him. Those who did were the type no one else would feel comfortable around. He was notoriously difficult to predict or pin down or even understand. Mr. Yancey concluded his survey of Jesus, he said, with as many questions as answers. And certainly I have not succeeded in taming him, for myself, let alone for anyone else. I now have a built-in suspicion against all attempts to categorize Jesus, to box him in. He is radically unlike anyone else who has ever lived. The difference, in Charles Williams' phrase, is the difference between one who is an example of living and one who is the life itself. So to sum it up, what I've learned about Jesus, I offer a series of impressions. They don't form a whole pattern by any means, but these are the facets of Jesus' life that challenge me and I suspect will never cease to challenge me. Tonight's program entitled, Why Jesus? And I would imagine that most people who have yielded to him, yielded their lives, their, their personhood, everything that makes them uniquely themselves, they found a, a very unusual person as they stepped out in faith. Unusual is too weak a word, because when Jesus came to earth, demons recognized him. The sick flocked to him. Sinners of all types and levels doused his feet and head with perfume. Meanwhile, he offended pious Jews with their strict preconceptions of what God should be like. And it makes you wonder, could religious types be doing just the reverse now? Could we be perpetuating the image of Jesus that fits our pious expectations, but doesn't match the person portrayed so vividly in the Gospels? One of the old hymns says, Jesus is the friend of sinners. And if we look at his record, he commended a groveling tax collector over a God-fearing Pharisee. The first person to whom he openly revealed himself as Messiah was a Samaritan woman who had a history of five failed marriages and was currently living with yet another man. With his dying breath, he pardoned a thief who would have zero opportunity for spiritual growth. Yet Jesus himself was not a sinner. So we view with amazement this one, Jesus, his uncompromising blend of graciousness towards sinners and hostility towards sin, because in much of church history there is seen virtually the opposite. We give lip service to hate the sin and loving the sinner, but how well do we practice this principle? We've sanitized and softened him. We've padded the cross. Tonight's program pointing to this one. Why we are so Christocentric? Because he is the hope of the world. He is the hope of the individual. I wouldn't have a chance without him. And certainly I wouldn't be on the air for fifty plus years speaking about him constantly unless there is something very, very special about him. Not just charisma. This man was like no other. We can't define him. I don't know the mechanics of conversion. You may say it's a change of mind or a complete 180 or whatever we might say. 
But there's no one in this world living, past, present, future, who could touch a person, open the blind eyes, the deaf ears, the silent tongues, and make them alive, give color, bring dynamic, make them something they're not. And by that I mean not taking them out of reality, but putting something into them. The only way I can personalize this is to, is to look back and say that I was a drifter, a failure, in so many of the important and significant areas of life. And I would not be even on the list of people who would dare ever get on the radio and talk to millions at any time about Jesus. Unless there was something very dynamic, unique, strategic, and earth-shaking, awesome, whatever adjective we would bring into the picture, he is beyond all of these. That's why some time ago we recorded a song that you may be familiar with about the specialness of Jesus. Bill Gaither wrote it, centering in on the uniqueness of this one, the Son of the Living God, and how He can make the difference in your life and mine tonight, giving us hope and peace that we'd never dreamed of. Let's listen closely once again.
why we continue singing about Jesus. This is Night Sounds. Just in case you stumbled upon our kilohertz or megahertz in the last couple of seconds, I'm Bill Pierce, reaching you after dark. The program Night Sounds has been on the air, as I've mentioned so many times, for a good many years, yet we continue to receive mail from listeners saying, Hey, where have you been? I've never heard this before. Well, whatever your condition or position in this, thank you for being there right now. And I hope we can make this an experience that will be repeated night by night. We're going off the air in a few minutes, and as we do, I enjoy leaving something of the ministry with you. The adjacent outreaches of Night Sounds, including the compact discs, some of which you've just heard, and the music that has been produced, the printed page, and the book Golden Moments. Or to pray for you. This is the most important ingredient in this ministry. So many let us know of the concerns of their heart, and we just feel with you, and we pray for you and with you. Many have written and asked for particular programs because we diverge every night into a new topic. If we can be of any help whatsoever as we're able, our mailing address, Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. Tonight's program with the title, Why Jesus? Well, let's just settle on one person, Joy Morgan Davis, who wrote these words in prayer. Lord Jesus, whenever I wonder why the trouble and the trial I think of the centurion at the cross. He was converted not by your life or your love or your manifest miracles. He was converted by your selfless suffering. So if this sorrow that now crushes me beneath an unseen cross can cause one soul to see you through me, then I will not have suffered in vain but in victory. That's just one testimony. As you go through your day and night and experience the various stimuli, people, sounds, impressions, and when the day is over and the convergence of all of these factors comes into your soul and sort of leaves you in a muddle and confusion, Let's bring in the oil of gladness, the touch of the Word of God, the peace given by His Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence with us tonight. Thank you for going all the way to the cross to give us a chance, another chance, and another and another opportunity to start over. Thank you for inviting us to yourself. And I just pray for that one tonight who's struggling with the issues of life, with the pressure points and the pain. Enable him or her to connect with you spiritually. Touch that person with your love, your life, your dynamic. Help us to breathe the fresh air of hope and love and life and peace, the peace that passes all understanding, promised to each one of us, in whose name we pray, the name of Jesus our Lord, amen. Well, I'm so grateful to you for joining me tonight and just investigating some of those whom Jesus touched. We're all different, and that's good, and he can touch you, and you can reach out in your own way spiritually because we're wired for this and ask him to change your life to give you a fresh breath of spiritual progress let us know we'd love to pray for you and send you materials that will help our mailing address night sounds wheaton illinois 60189 why jesus touch him by faith and you'll find out till next we meet a peaceful good night to all of you